I'm Nate Kunzer, a product specialist from Hive North America, and today I'm going to walk you through the features of the Hive App Industrial. The Hive App Industrial is Hydolf's solution to higher volume and throughput evaporation. The Hive App Industrial comes standard with a 20 liter evaporation flask and can also be operated with a 10 and a 6 liter evaporation flask. Those flasks can also come in different variants, such as powder flasks and amber coated flasks. When it comes to higher volume evaporation, we wanted to make sure we had a unit that didn't just thrive in a clean room inside of your lab. We wanted to build it for a more rigorous production type environment. So with that, we have a few features in there to keep it rugged, durable, and make it last longer. The first of which being this glass cabinetry, which protects the inside of your unit, uh, your evaporation flask, your condensers, and your receiving flasks from any mishaps that might happen inside of a production floor. It also protects the operator uh, from variants that might be happening inside of your unit, such as splashing that might occur from your bath. These units are built to last 10 plus years, and all the parts inside are created to wear slower and to last longer. In addition to having a higher degree of reliability, the HiveVap Industrial is also incredibly easy to use. The biggest example of that is in the flask handling system. Most industrial scale evaporator flask handling systems require you to call over an additional operator to help you remove the flask. We wanted to make a system that could be done with a single operator. The way it works is we would first lock the flask so we don't get any rotation. Then we have these two support bars here that can be closed to support the weight of the flask. And then instead of having a clamping system that you have to unscrew multiple times, we wanted one that was much more simple. So to operate that, we push a button in, lift up, and pull down. That will disengage the clamp, and we can slide it out using those bars. We also designed the neck of the flask to be large enough to fit your whole arm into for easier removal of your product. And then when we want to replace the flask, we basically just do the same thing in reverse. We aim it at the seal and put our PTFE tube in, close it, clamp the flask, remove our bars, and unlock the drive. Another feature involved is a float switch inside of the bath. That detects the level inside of your bath to prevent spillage when we have the flask meet the bath. Because your flask is going to displace some of that water in the bath. So while we're lifting up the bath and that float switch is detecting the level of the water, as it gets displaced by that flask, it'll stop your bath from going any higher once it reaches the maximum fill point. That way you don't have to worry about spilling. But it has a second feature, and that feature is to work with the automatic water refill of the unit. If you were to hook the unit up to plumbing inside of your lab, you can then have that bath constantly topped off so you never have to worry about refilling it. This is both incredibly convenient, but also helps us reduce process times. It does this by adding small bits of water over time instead of a large amount at one time. The reason why that's important is because adding a large quantity of room temperature water might drop your bath temperature by a good 10 to 15 degrees. And in order to hit a stable evaporation again, we have to wait for the heating bath to bring the water back up to that temperature. When working with small dribbles of water in there, that bath temperature stays nice and constant, and so does our evaporation rate. Besides that, inside of our drive over the vapor tube, we also have a double-lipped PTFE vacuum seal. That is working in conjunction with an adapter that has FFKM O-rings. The PTFE and the FFKM are incredibly soft and resistant, meaning your vacuum seal will last a very long time without needing to be replaced, while still holding an incredibly tight vacuum. And that's thanks to the two points of contact on the vapor tube from that double lipped seal. Moving over to the condenser side, there is a refill valve here that can be attached via this hose barb right here to any type of tubing that you prefer to use. Whether it's uh, PTFE or the vacuum tubing we supply, basically whatever is chemically compatible with your product. What's great about this valve is it means we can refill the evaporation flask without ever needing to break vacuum. And that's thanks to the internal vacuum of the unit pulling in solvent from the outside. And that's done via this valve right here. By loosening it, it breaks the seal, pulls product in, and then by closing it, we can pause that. This will let you get a few more runs out of your unit without having to shut it down, break vacuum, and remove your flask. 
There's also a sensor up towards the top that will monitor your vapor temperature. This is great for determining your boiling points and being able to adjust your other parameters around it. And that same sensor can be used for automated evaporation settings, just by moving it from the vapor temperature port down to the condenser port. And down here in our glassed cabinetry, we have two receiving flasks, both of which are 10 liters. Now, the reason why we have two 10 liter receiving flasks are one, the obvious, it provides us an additional amount of solvent recovery space. We can fill it up to 20 liters, but what's also neat is we can use that to work in a continuous fashion as well. If we were to fill one receiving flask up, seal it off and fill the other, that initially sealed receiving flask can then be drained before reconnecting it to the system. Some of the technical features of the high vap industrial involve the different methods of running your evaporation process. There is an initial simple evaporation process where we can adjust our vacuum, our heating bath temperature, and our rotation speed, and do a very basic type of evaporation process. On that panel, it'll also show off your vapor temperature so that can be monitored as well throughout. We can get a little bit more advanced with the evaporation process, thanks to the integration of the vacuum into the high vap industrial itself, and do things such as ramping. Ramping allows us to set multiple steps to an evaporation process. Incredibly helpful if we're doing multi-solvent evaporation, or maybe even powder drying, where we want to set a nice, even ramp at the end to truly dry out that powder. You can set a large amount of steps, all with different varying time parameters. And we also have an automated evaporation feature called Dynamic Auto Accurate. That uses the same temperature sensor that we use for vapor temperature that will go inside of your condenser coils and basically wait there until a load is shown. While it's waiting, our vacuum level is dropping slowly over time until vapor is produced. That vapor then carries that heat load over the sensor and it can tell that evaporation is occurring. Then it'll hold the vacuum there and basically continue the evaporation process until there's nothing left evaporating, where it will either shut down or keep searching for the next boiling point. The HiVap Industrial also now comes with a data logging feature on all of the new HiVap Industrials coming out or via a software update. And lastly, I wanna talk about the pieces of equipment that go with the HiVap Industrial. The Rotovac 20 vacuum pump is a two millibar pump that allows us to get the absolute most out of our high vap industrial via a large suction capacity. That way, we do not have to wait incredibly long times for our vacuum level to reach operation specs. It also has a secondary condenser on there. That secondary condenser comes out at the exhaust port of the vacuum. The reason it comes out at the exhaust is because now any solvent that may have made it through the vacuum pump is being condensed at atmospheric pressure as opposed to under vacuum making it incredibly easy for a small condenser like that to crash out any solvent that made it through. And then lastly, we have our chiller, and that is a 5,000 watt chiller that runs incredibly efficiently to combat the heat that is coming off an evaporator of this size. We need that type of cooling capacity because of the amount of heat that comes off of a larger industrial scale evaporation. Thank you for watching this video on the HiVap Industrial. Again, I am Nate Kunzer, Prox Specialist from Hyder North America. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us at the information below. Thank you.